Genius, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today we are back with another scary Halloween-y themed vocal analysis. When I asked you what pieces you wanted me to analyse within the scary realm, this seems to be the second most popular choice. Type O negative, black number one, Little Miss Girl. Sounds pretty spooky to me. The other Halloween-y themey song was quite PG in the horror department. The vocals were spectacular. If you want to see me analyse that, I think I can put them. You'll also see our Halloween costume in that video. Daphne and I spent hours preparing it. So much so that we simply ran out of time to prepare another Halloween costume for this one, so I'm sorry. But next year we'll be different in the costume department. I've just never really given Halloween too much of a thought. I'm probably the least scary person, so it, it doesn't come naturally. I'm working on it. So let's get cracking. Boo! I told you. She's <laughs> in love with herself. She likes the dark. Ah! Ah! This and is creepy. Milk white neck. The devil's mark. Notice the high pass filter on that. The high pass filter is a production technique. She likes the dark. She likes the dark. So we're not getting the true full quality of the vocal performance coming through just yet, but there is a bass line. So we've got that contrast, a little creepy bass line coming in and the extreme presence of mouthy sounds. Milk white neck. I mean, that is it's given me the willies. I'm scared. Oh, I'm on the larynx. Devil's mark. <sighs> now it's all hollow. Sea. Oh, the moon is full. That harmony is horrible. In a good way. Or will she trick or treat? <laughs> are only semitones apart and because they're so close together it creates what we call dissonance which if you like is the opposite of harmony the further we bring the notes apart the less weird it sounds basically there's complementary frequencies happening but here no compliments just pain. This one semitone interval is used all the time to create threat or horror, most famously in Jaws. This is literally the How To Make A Song Scary Starter Pack right now. Very mouthy, creepy lyrics, semitones, and then to top it all off, we're rolling the R's. Trick or treat. That doesn't actually work on the word horror, that sounds ridiculous. Okay, we're holding a whole bass. Like a guitar. Put those for round two. Oh, baby, really most of all. Wake up, don't be on you. Well, when I call her evil, she just left. What's in the tree? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh. So that contrast. Oh yeah. 
What an interesting composition and more importantly arrangement. The song is one thing but how they've choose to arrange the harmony amongst the instruments and with that attention to detail in terms of the frequencies being very separate throughout the whole verse and then exploding in this like chorus section. Ah! Yeah, what a refreshing approach to rock. Although some sections are completely typical of rock, very heavy, distortion everywhere in the voice, guitars and stuff, some sections are not, like the verse. No distortion anywhere and quite atypical rock instruments as well, like they're using that kind of harpsichord sound. Which is not a rocky instrument at all, it's to give it that kind of horror theme, but at no point do you ever feel like you've left rock. Let's listen to that little transition into the second verse again, cause it's just so cool. Actually, yeah, notice the difference in vocal performance. Black, 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 black. Lots of space, low larynx, humongous vocal tract, loads of frequency and resonance. A very conscious effort, I believe, to make the chorus more vowel dominant and the verse more consonant dominant. Lots of clicks and T's and forks. It's a really nice, really nice like love the day. It was like love the day. Loving you was like love in the dead. Loving you was like love in the dead. Well, not very nice. Loving you was like love in the dead. Was like love in the dead. Ghost. And I guess if loving that person was like loving the dead, maybe they're a ghost and they're, they're the dead person like Ooh, It's not a very nice thing to say. There were some very beautiful moments of distortion. Just a little bit of grit. Ooh, mm. That's nice, very crunchy. Was like love in the dead. Notice how when they drop to the word like, there's a little bit more distortion. Was like. Now because it opens up, that suddenly provides more space in the vocal tract, which encourages a little bit more flapping. The flapping here, the style of distortion, is higher up in the tract than like false fold distortion, like growling. Imagine the false folds are here. <coughs> and the little cartilages are here. He's like loving the When we have that kind of lighter distortion, it happens around that cartilage area a little bit more. So they didn't really delve into the growl realm. Very threatening. Oh, now new stuff. Now we've got clicks. <laughs> that was like Adam's family. This is so good. Well that was bloody terrific. 
I really enjoyed myself. I love a musical breath and there are loads of them in here. When the breath isn't a particularly prominent feature of a song, they're usually kind of faded out a little bit in post-production so that you don't focus on the breath. So when you hear a very audible breath and a very stylized breath, like the was like. You know it was deliberate. Yet another highly effective creepy contribution. This is utter chaos, isn't it? Look at them all. The double bass being played like a electric bass is one thing but so much hair there's just so much hair there's either a thunderstorm outside or someone needs to change a bulb and look at this little character and we've got all kinds of cool foley sounds in this we've got rain and thunderstorms to like set the scene <laughs> Music productions are so often exclusively with musical instruments, but it's such a missed opportunity to create atmosphere and stuff because there's music in all sounds, you know, everything has some kind of pitch or tonal quality or can at least contribute to a production in some way. I just think it really helps transport us into the musical realm the artist is creating. It's kind of like you're in their world and hearing all of the sounds that happen in their world as well. Not just the music, but the whole environment. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments or over on Discord as it would be my absolute pleasure. Happy Halloween, have a wonderful day. I love you so much and I cannot wait to see you next time. Mwah.